So this is a 3D recording, so coming at you. So I want to try and I want to try and show the 3D. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this basically center is showing us all the innovation that is um, here in Anhui province. So we have some uh, robotic stuff here. Some sort of exoskeleton. Actually I saw a pretty cool exoskeleton um, here in China and it was being trialed by um, a house removals company to help the guys carry heavy um, objects and things like, like that, which was, was pretty cool. I've been to numerous um, factories where you see that the level of automation is, is absolutely sky high, you know, there's, there's so much automation. I think this is how China will stay competitive. I hear a lot of Westerners say that, you know, our oh, manufacturing will move to cheaper countries like uh, Vietnam and India and Bangladesh and places like that. And th there will be some manufacturing that moves there, but there's a couple of things to remember. The first thing is that a lot of um, those companies in um, Vietnam and Bangladesh and India are actually owned by Chinese owners. And the second thing is that with the automation that China can still remain competitive and I've actually been quite shocked at the amount of automation in factories that I've actually seen here. Right we're arriving at a uh, museum so we're going to have a look at some um, historical stuff I guess. It's a very nice building, it's a very traditional kind of style of building. Let's go and have a look what's inside. A lot of gold going on here. It's Zhu Yuanjiang, founder of the Ming Dynasty. So this here is the founder of the Ming Dynasty. Oh my God, this must be one of the biggest abacuses I've ever seen. Wow, it's huge. How cool is that? In some schools in China, they still teach kids how to use these today. And uh, when you see Chinese people count on these, they can count incredibly fast. The Cheng Da Wei, a great abacus master. Okay, so this guy was uh, obviously the man for abacuses. This is pretty cool. It's done like a traditional kind of, I don't know, street or something like that. It looks, uh, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So different, different buildings and, and things like that. <laughs> Oh, this is uh, like a traditional kind of courtyard area. That's really nice. Whoa. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool how that's been created. Like a traditional street scene in a museum. Great. This uh, blue and white porcelain here, you see this like all over the place. It's very, very famous in China. So this is also a very traditional kind of Chinese structure here. Yeah, this is um, Li Hongjiang and he's a high-ranking official from the Qing Dynasty. So, uh, a very important person indeed. Right, next stop is a garden expo. So uh, it's the first time I've been to a garden expo in China. So let's have a look. We're going to see a promotional video. This looks pretty impressive. Let's Whoa, look at this. Very impressive, they got this like sides here. It's like a whole like 3D kind of experience. Very, very impressive. <laughs> oh, so this is some of the uh, companies that are here in her play, I guess. It's an exhibition where there's elements in the gardens from each individual cities around China. It's quite busy here. We're going into this park and I will say, China do have some pretty amazing um, 
parks, you know, even in, in their smaller cities, they have some really, really lovely parks. And uh, let's have a look around this one. It's very busy here anyway. Yeah, beautiful place. Oh, we've got some um, bridges over the water here. Um, what a nice place. The weather's great as well. It's, it's not hot, it's not cold. Just lovely. I think I mentioned before in videos it gets way too hot in Shenzhen. This is really nice. So this garden we're going into is... Um, oh, this is nice. It's like that, it reminds me of that Eddie Murphy film. <laughs> the Golden Child. Anybody remembers that? Put a comment down. Okay. So we're going to go across the bridge. How nice. Wow, look at that. It's beautiful. <coughs> oh, it's very nice. Look at that over there. Oh, what's this? Is it like a rest area or a tea house or something? Look at that. Apparently, this is one of the largest um, park or gardens in China. And in total, um, in the park, there are 38 different gardens. As I say, this one's Hangzhou. And uh, let's go and have a walk around and check it out. We're going to enter the, um, the gardens of Germany, Deutschland. So uh, let's go have a look. Oh yeah, that's a very, very German style. <coughs> wow, it's pretty nice. So it's not only a park that has themes on Chinese cities. It also has themes on European cities by the looks of it. Oh, we got like a little German beer bar by the looks of it. Okay. Got some uh, German pictures. You having some beer, Max? Yeah, why not? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Max has got his beer look. Good stuff. Good stuff, huh? It's warm beer. It's warm, dark beer. You want to try it? No, thanks. Oh, <laughs> I do, but I'm not into warm beer at all. <laughs> oh, Derby UK. Okay. Oh my God. Derby. Haha. <laughs> oh, let's go. <clears throat> they got some British train track going on here. Right, I'm not really familiar with Derby in the UK, but I guess they must have something to do with trains. I bet these are nice in the dark. I bet these all light up in the dark. Their lights look that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. <coughs> this park was created from the old Hefei Airport. And this is in front here. This was the terminal building of the airport. This would have been the apron where all the planes would have been. As I say, it's been converted into this park. It's a good idea. So oh, I found a fan who's followed my video for a long, long time. Yay. But this is a viewing deck. And you can see this was a runway here. This probably would have been a taxiway over here. So right now, we're going up the runway. This would have been the runway. So this is where planes would have taken off. So this is a big sign for iFlyTech and iFlyTech make translation device and I've actually got a iFlyTech device here's my iFlyTech device look and it's a translation product and there we go to this uh, huge innovation exhibition by the looks of it it's apparently a voice and translation development exhibition this is what it is here look the sixth world voice expo and iFlyTech 
1024 Global Development Festival 2023. So that's what it is. That's this year. Okay, so it looks like the exhibition is in a stadium, which is uh, interesting. And you got iFlyTech here. As I say, they're uh, a company that does sort of voice translation from one language to another. Uh, AI stuff, they have um, various uh, things like this whole pavilion is I fly tech by the looks of it. Some sort of glove here, various exoskeleton kind of products helping people to walk again. Some little robot, a humanoidy kind of robot here. Uh, orthopedic robotic surgery, okay. Some uh, underwater drone product. Not quite sure what that one is. And uh, not quite sure. Oh, it's a picking robot for uh, warehouses. You can see the um, the brush. This is uh, interesting indeed. I think it's not quite as good as a human yet. This is more uh, industrial kind of robots. So we have, um, this looks like he's putting some sort of uh, silicon chips or circuit boards into testing um, areas. But yeah, it's gonna go into test. So this will, will be using a test environment. We have these robot dogs, which everybody's aware of now again. These kind of robots are used in scenarios where it's dangerous or, or unsafe. If you have a building that, that might collapse, they can send these robots in. In areas of search and rescue or where there's maybe dangerous gases or dangerous things. So they would use these kind of uh, robots in there. We have a lot of school kids here. Doing some learning. So what's being demonstrated to these kids here? This is kind of like an, an open AI model. So it's like um, a chat GPT with a built-in DALI 3. And uh, she's just asked you to draw a picture. Unfortunately, I don't speak enough Chinese to be able to understand what she's saying. But this is pretty much um, iFlytek's version of uh, chat GPT. Uh, so, Obviously, um, you need to prompt them in Chinese and your responses will be in Chinese. But this is, uh, you know, it just shows you that China are not behind in AI by any stretch of the imagination. You know, this is, um, they also have fairly cutting edge AI um, large language models as well. Obviously, it's, uh, this is obviously trained on uh, Chinese data and all these. These kids are getting a demonstration here of uh, what's going on. Okay, we're arriving at the Anhui Free Trade and Enterprise Zone. This looks like a company called EA Speed, I think. We're gonna have a look. So basically this company, EA Speed, makes a display technology that is kind of like a 3D. You don't have to touch the screen. You can just put your finger near the screen this has uh, lots of implications in, in many different um, sectors. So, so I can open and close the lid and I don't actually have to touch the screen. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? It's very responsive, actually. But basically, this flat screen projects an... Um, an image which is about 45 degrees and then that's what you use to to press the uh, functions of the screen so that's just really kind of cool so personally I think the best area of this will be something like um, situations where hygiene is crucial like public toilets like um, healthcare um, food preparation these kind of things where infection or germs could easily spread and, and they're talking about using it as like a head-up displays in cars so the driver doesn't have to look away which I think is a, a great idea but personally to see it on something like a washing machine I really can't see the point in that but I can see it has many uses and it's, it's pretty cool technology it's like a 
3D hologram screen. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool.